First, we'll have to know what it is we want to transform, I suppose. And in as much as we can talk on many, 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 many subjects, how about somebody saying something they would like be interested in talking about today? Let's just have that. That's a good start. John, you came to Father's Distance. You want to lay out one you would like to have talked about? How about uh, taking charge of our inner feelings? That sounds pretty good. That's the first start in it. Take charge. <coughs> uh, my inner state of being, okay? Now, as long as we got John to start, somebody else give me one, okay? I like to have your choices. Yeah, how about you, Cal? I'm about to have something you want to talk about. Why did you want to transform? Is it lower? Oh, Huh? I can't think of it. Ask me again in a minute. You were embarrassed at the moment. Huh? Working with um, energy levels. Working with energy levels. That's a good one. changing environments all the time and changing things around it. In other words, if you're cold, you feel shivery and you want to do something, you jump around to get warm, put on more clothes, turn on heat, what have you. <clears throat> so we're trying to work with the physical body. So that determines one of it. Now, <coughs> we happen to have decided certain things in our life and as well to look at what we decided and see if we still agree that they're correct. Now most of these things we decided come up as a firm conclusion was made when we were tiny little children. 
more than likely from the first day we were born on. You know, we didn't have words then, but we sure had feelings. You listen to babies, everybody here has a kick and scream about a lot of things, don't they? And they'll purr it once in a while. The right to, they do that. So we will first start out with the fundamental conclusion. Now, we have a statement that we kick around. Now, just the statement wouldn't do you any good, but uh, I'll kick it out anyway. Uh, when once a decision has been made with feeling, it's the rule of attitude action from now on until we totally reevaluate that decision. Okay? Now, that's one of those things you don't need to make a note of, but remember that whenever we've firmly come up with something, it's still there. Even though it was made without words, so obviously we only recall in words since we've grown up because we got accustomed to them and so forth. But we'll go back to the feeling because that's the one that John asked us to talk about, the inner state of being. So the first thing we decided on being born, we had been living in our existing Call it whichever one you like. Come right in, sir. We were waiting for you. Uh, first thing we decided after having survived for a while in this lovely, non-disturbed state in the uterine world, you know, nothing bothers you much. The temperature's about constant. Nobody's hollering at you. Nobody's saying, don't do that. Nobody's saying, hurry up. When they saying eat your dinner or anything else, it just light it up. Kicking, moving around, mostly sucking their thumb and having a pretty good time. If you don't think they suck their thumb, you'll get a picture of one in utero and you'll find that's usually what they're doing. They got a thumb stuck in their mouth. <clears throat> and doing pretty good. Nothing's bothering, everything's fine, nothing to complain about. So as soon as you're born, man, you begin to get a gob of disturbances. First place, it's very disturbing to be born. Mama fusses, but you should feel what the kid feels. <laughs> That's more something. And as soon as he gets born, somebody starts poking them around, and they're chilly, and they're a whole bunch of other things, and very uncomfortable. So, of course, the obvious decision is that their whole purpose the whole purpose of this living bit out here that we got thrown into all of a sudden <clears throat> is to regain the non-disturbed state. Now, um, that is not the way Planet Earth works, you know, while we're here. I think all of us have noticed that, have we not? That uh, you do get disturbed every now and then from something comes along. It's noisy or it's cold or it's hot <coughs> or something is uncomfortable from your physical senses and you don't like that very well. I don't care what it is, you don't like it. Some people like noise, other people like quiet and peace. Some people in quiet and peaceful situations are extremely bored. Have you ever noticed that? Mm -hmm. Bored to death. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Gotta get where the action is. <coughs> so here comes this whole bit of that we have a fundamental purpose. Now let's check it out for a few minutes and see if about everything we do is not to regain the non disturbed state. Is that about right, John? Yes, sir. You got a pain somewhere, as you immediately want it fixed. Is that right? They go through a hell of a lot of pain to get it fixed, but you go at it trying to get it fixed. Is that right? So, uh, if we are bored, we want to have company. If we have company, we'd like for them to go every once in a while. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <clears throat> one said, uh, the most interesting about your presence is the absence of it. <laughs> so, uh, this goes on and on. So we are busy if we look. We go to work, make a lot of money because we think it's non-disturbance. Um, we'll find out that the only thing that really buys is taxes. 
But, uh, and we go on with this year in, year out. So now, most of your life, John, been spent trying to be non-disturbed. Is that about right? That's right. Now, I think uh, everybody else could answer that all right. We won't put Carolyn in here in this situation anymore <laughs> by asking her. But is that about correct? And everything you do is to try to be non-disturbed. Hmm? everything we possibly can. Now, I think we could all take some time and reevaluate that decision. We live on planet Earth, which has an ever-changing thing going on and was not described as heaven to anybody. And I doubt if heaven is totally non-disturbed. If I went there looking to be, something would go haywire. Those harps would get on my nerves after a while. Or a few other things. I was in the dining room night before last down in San Jose and a lady come out with her big harp. I just said she was stopping. <coughs> it didn't really turn me on, you know, the way she was doing the thing. So uh, we could say now I'm going to live on planet Earth and I'm not in a hurry to leave. Anybody here in a hurry to get out? Do I like it here. It's, Noisy at times, it's cold at times, hot at times, wars at times. Oh, all sorts of wonderful things, murders, suicides, everything goes on. <clears throat> but I'm not in a hurry to leave yet. Anybody here in a hurry to get out? Well, we can make arrangements. We'll open the window. <clears throat> and take care of that in a matter of seconds. So, uh, we want to be here, so let's be a little realistic, and you're going to be disturbed sometimes, John. There's going to be things you don't like. Now, that don't mean you have to be disturbed just because something's going on you don't like. Is that all right? <clears throat> I experience many things a day that I don't like, so what? I'm free to experience whatever's going on. That's what this system is about. <clears throat> if I had something happened to my central nervous system, I could no longer feel anything, that'd be pretty bad, would you, John? Huh? Sure. I got one numb finger from 19 years ago. Right there. And I just soon it come to and start have feeling it. You know, and do all sorts of things. It's handy when I'm cooking, even <laughs> stick it in the table and see if it feels my right inside, pull it out, don't hurt a bit, don't do anything. Sometimes it makes blister. So, obviously, we would like to have sensation. Is that right? We are worried about it. If you wake up with something numb someday and it stays numb more than a few minutes, you, you get concerned. Is that correct? I want it all working. So, now, when you reevaluate this decision from the years of we've been around experience, we would very much like to have sensation. That's it. We don't have it. <coughs> Correct? Bad way. So the whole purpose of living is not to regain a non-disturbed state. Now, if we get that one point down, we then find, well, I'm perfectly free to experience whatever arises today. I'm going to experience it anyway. I might as well do it gracefully. Is that right? If somebody uh, grumps at you, uh, you will uh, going to experience it, aren't you? The other day I was driving down the street and a bicycle rider was behind me and I had to put on a brake because they was, I didn't have to, I could have run over the dog. The dog ran out in front of me. I stepped on a brake. He wobbled real hard to get his bike stopped. He won these racers, you know, with a helmet, uh, tight zip pants and shirt, everything. He was sticked out for professional bicycle riding. And he became disturbed. So he comes up by the window and calls me a few dirty names and slams the side of the car. Well, obviously he hurt his hand worse than he did the car, but uh, he didn't hurt the car at all. But he made a lot of noise, and I guess he felt better then because he had stuck up for his rights or something. <clears throat> so what? Now I'm perfectly free to experience bicycle riders on the street. They're all right. They're doing what they feel is right, proper, and justifiable, so why should I get upset because this guy is, okay? Now, I could have jumped out of the car and made all sorts of emotions and threatened him. We've had a battle rock, but he's a lot younger than I am, so I wouldn't go out there and fight him. I'm taking care of signs out on a nice suit, and I don't like those 
messed up. Mama told me early, your fighting's hard on your clothes, so don't do it. So, well, I'm not, not playing with that. But uh, here you could take one thing and say that trying to spend my life trying to be non-disturbed is a big waste. Is that right? That's a big waste. So I'm not going to try to do it. Now there's four ways basically that we can be disturbed. And so the little fella started out first and wanted to get pleasure and comfort. Pleasure and comfort. Boy, that's nice stuff, you know. And it wanted to escape all pain. Now we always think of pain as something bad and we should take a pill for or get an operation for or whatever the case may be, but wouldn't we be in a very precarious, dangerous situation if I could not feel sensations that I don't like, which we all call pain, is that right? I could take a hold of a hot skillet handle and never notice a thing, everything's going fine till the smell of burning flesh. <clears throat> and then I might notice something was going haywire, but even I don't like the smell of burning flesh, so that is pain too. So I just would be uh, violated very shortly if I could not feel pain. Is that right? You couldn't make them, could you, John? Huh? That's the only way it tells you, stop it. And sometimes, is that right? So, pleasure and comfort is wonderful stuff. I just love it. But I know I'm not going to have it all the time. Are you? I can't do that. I have a nice supply of it about every day. But I don't uh, expect to have it last all day long, every day. Sometimes it does. So what? I'm just saying, going to go on. And uh, knowing this, sooner or later, the pain will come. Now, another thing we all want is attention. Now, uh, the baby's going to get attention because it uh, starts crying. And that's the most unpleasant sound on planet Earth, so then we do something about it right quick. So it learns this magic formula. All you got to do is complain and I'll be fixed. Things will be fixed up or everybody will be working at it anyway, won't they? They'll all be trying. <coughs> and we want to escape being ignored. Now every once in a while I'll drive on the highway, I drive like 75 or 80 miles an hour, and I sure hope that guy with the little lights on top of his car ignores me. I don't like to pay the penalty for that one, but I do like to wheel on down the road every once in a while. You do that, John? You uh, increase the speed limit down then? Occasionally. And don't you hope you're ignored? Yes, sir. <laughs> I do. So, again, we at uh, certain times I like to be ignored, and at certain times I like to have attention, but I always know how to get it. All I got to go out and dish out some of it. I'll give attention. I go give other people. I know they're all hungry for your attention, so I give them some. And you know what? They always give me some back. Maybe not as much as I passed out, but I get enough in the day. I know I don't get. I need a little bit, but not a whole lot. I found out what effort I'm willing to put out to get how much I need for today. That's simple arrangement. Now, we all need some approval. And we all want to escape disapproval. Now I've noticed in my years of being around a lot of people is that there's one person you disapprove of more than anybody else. Just one. You know who that is? Number one. You go around picking on yourself. Now I'm not going to disapprove of you, but you sure could, huh? That's where we get all these funny little feelings like embarrassment and everything. We disapprove of ourselves to start with. Well, if I approved of you, I wouldn't be embarrassed or bashful or any of these things. I just want to do it. But if I start picking on me and say, well, I don't look right, I don't sound like I may make an ass out of myself, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so we start off that the major person we disapprove of is the one you're going to spend your life with. Not just part of it, but all of it. You can't get a divorce. You're stuck. <laughs> you're going to be with you, so you might as well like you. I think you're wonderful. I don't see why you can't. Okay? Um, I know people who wouldn't, by any stretch of their imagination, put anybody down except themselves, but they do an awful good job of that a lot of the time. You put yourself down, Carolyn? Huh? 
You? Yeah. For sure. Why, why do you got against you? You look like a nice person to me. I would enjoy your company. I find you delightful. Why would you go around putting yourself down? Somebody told you it was a thing to do. <laughs> so now you go around disapproving of at least one person. Is that right, John? Yes, sir. You may not disapprove of anybody else in the world, but who is the one you disapprove? John. You are after John all the time. Is that right? And of course, we want to feel useful until somebody starts using us. <laughs> it sounds good to say, I want to be useful. Okay. I want to do something worthwhile in the world. I don't know what it is. That I tell people that the nicest thing you can do is contribute to a pleasant, harmonious feeling wherever you are. Can't you do that? Yes. I do that driving in the car by myself. Is that right? Sweet little old lady came in the office the other day. She's lost her eyesight. She is more than legally blind. She can make out light with one eye with a jewelry glue. And she's in the age which most people retire. You know? I don't like that word, it's terrible. But anyway, she's retired. That means tired and more tired again. <laughs> uh, she's retired. And she wanted to do volunteer work. So every place she called up, she wanted to volunteer. And they said, well, can you type? Can you uh, stuff envelopes? Can you put stamps on this? And, you know, the usual work. You can't get anybody paid to do it. So somebody do it for nothing. And of course she said, now I can't do it. And I said, well, here's the name of a man who's the head of a big nonprofit group very near where you live. <clears throat> and they have all kinds of folks running through their place which they are do-gooders with other people's money. And I said, you call him up and tell him that you have a specialty of providing uh, pleasant, harmonious mood wherever you go and that you'd like to volunteer your services. Well, she thought that was all right. She said, well, I, what if he don't take me? I said, well, I'll make a phone call. I called him. Hey, Ron, got a lady. She's a specialist in providing pleasant, harmonious moods. You got room for her? He said, God, yes, you got three more? <laughs> so, you know, she's a volunteer immediately now and then. But you know something, she so, we also all want to escape the feeling of inferiority. That's why we go around picking on ourselves. We feel inferior. Now, there's no two of us alike. Now, if you had two of these flowers here, I'd real like to compare this one and that one over there. They're different, aren't they? Now, which one's the better and which one's the worse and so forth. They're both beautiful, aren't they? They're unique works of life. Unique work of art. So how are you inferior? Hmm? I came up here on an airplane. I can't fly that big jet, but I got there in front of it. And I sure thankfully he could, so I could take a nap. <laughs> Not inferior to him. I can do a bunch of things he can't do. <clears throat> I can do a bunch of them he can't do. It's serious. Something you can do pretty well. One or two, anything, huh? Nothing else. Sit around, look pretty, improve the scenery. You can always do that, but just sitting still, right? You can improve the scenery. So then, you're not inferior to anybody in the world. You're a unique work of art. Life painted a beautiful picture, and did a thing, and here I am. So, somebody don't like me, they just have poor taste. I'm not going to bother with people with poor taste. Are you? Hmm? So you're not inferior. So with having all of these, we revert it back so we're always feeling on this side. <clears throat> I'm having pain, so something terrible's wrong with me, and it, you think you got troubles and you got a pain, but wait till you go to the doctor and get a diagnosis. <laughs> now you've got a problem. You really got something. That's the uh, most dangerous thing to your health there is, you know, say so that I could use the bottles of wine all have signs on them that says uh, this product may be hazardous to your health, but there's none on the physician's front door. But that's the <laughs> biggest hazard you ever have is to get a diagnosis. That's really dangerous. You get diagnosed with having cancer, they might as well shoot you. <clears throat> and uh, down there, there's a considerable number of people have been diagnosed with having AIDS acquired immune deficiency. You might as well shoot them. 
get it over with right now. Because they, they're going to have nothing but misery from now on, and there isn't anything wrong with them. They could just as easily have acquired super immunity and get this along. You can acquire either one, it's about what you do. You can acquire either one, no, no problem. You can get it anywhere. So, the first thing we did was go back like the child for the first two years of your life. When you complain, everybody jumped to to try to get you comfortable to shut that crying up because they wanted to be comfortable, okay? And you're not comfortable with the baby crying. So, <clears throat> complaining began to be a way of life. Now, you didn't notice that after a couple of years, it quit working very well. Have you ever noticed your complaining don't get you anything? Huh? Have you ever noticed that? It's more of the same stuff from somebody else. And then, of course, we got a little older, we started stomping our little feet, holding our breath, and a whole bunch of other things. <clears throat> Sticking up for our rights. Now, I recall how I got here, and I happen to remember that. I arrived broke, helpless, naked, unable to speak a language, <clears throat> unable to do anything for myself, practically, maybe gained nourishment a little bit was about the only thing. And you couldn't do anything. Now, what kind of rights have you got when you arrived here and found a well-equipped world? It was equipped, but there was a couple of slaves to look after you. And uh, you had uh, food, clothing, shelter, and transportation. You've had that ever since you got here, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't bring it with you, did you? And you had all these people taking care of you, and they had highways and roadways and airplanes and trains and automobiles when you got here. Yeah, of course, they didn't have cars when I got here, but they got pretty quick for me. <laughs> so, I've been kind of fascinated with them ever since. <laughs> didn't have any around. We had horses hitched to a little weak wagon when I got here. But nevertheless, all these things are here. I got a long time to horse. So, we didn't do a thing to have all these beautiful highways, hotels built. I can take off across the country. No matter where I stop, there's a hotel and there's restaurants. If I forget to take something with me, there's a store that's got to run down the street, right? I, I travel light because I always make down when I got it right down the way. That's the way I used to get new clothes. I travel and receive some meat some more, so I'll go back then. <coughs> Brought it with you and do that. <clears throat> so we have everything provided for us, but we didn't do anything to get it very much. Is that right? It was already here. They were bringing oranges from the south and <clears throat> Japan and wherever. Everything was all here. So we don't have any rights. I have a tremendous lot of privileges. And the only time that I lose a privilege is when I mistake it for a right to start sticking up for it. Man, do they go quick. <clears throat> Did you ever notice that? Huh? I don't have any rights anywhere, but I have a lot of privileges. And my system is that <clears throat> I have a privilege. The best way to keep it is to appreciate it by my behavior, see that it's a privilege, and then I'm going to enhance it if possible by doing a pretty nice thing. And I'm going to try to get some more because I just love privileges, but I don't have any rights. Do you have any rights? I can't see it one minute when it's happening. So if we get that out of your head, John, you think you have any rights? No, sir. Have you generally acted as though you did through the years? Yes. Yep. Okay, now we're trying to produce, John, an immediate transformation. So when I see certain things, I'm a transformed being. So I stick up for rights. Now on the other side of the coin, uh, folks got tired of all our complaining and so forth when we was about two years old and began to try to housebreak us a little bit. I guess that's the word, isn't it? They trained us in the way we should go. So their way we they figured we should go is please everybody. So we started trying to please because it was painful not to please everybody all the time. Now that brought about a split because I'm here 
complaining, sticking up for rights to get all my way to be non-disturbed, and here's somebody trying to tell me I gotta do something else. So that brings a split. Now you got a split up person apart. You're in conflict. You know about conflict? You know about conflict? You know about conflict? Okay, we all know about conflict. Now, I want to stick up for my rights and complain, but if I do, that'll cause pain, so I'll try to please everybody. But I don't want to please those people. I want me please. Is that right? But I must do it now. Right? So now I've got conflict. A new thing has come into existence called conflict. <coughs> Inner conflict, John. Before I was only in conflict with the environment. Mama may not do what I wanted to, so I screamed louder and kicked the floor and a few other things. So I may be in conflict outside, but never inner conflict until this happening came along. Now this is your inner state of being then, it's basically conflict. Well that brought about the necessity to have a chooser up here, and the chooser called itself I, and it tried to choose between these two ways of doing things please them or complain and stick up for my rights, okay? <clears throat> now as we did that, uh, the chooser has a very unpleasant task, John. If he gives this one the nod, this makes him feel guilty. Now we got a new one coming in, guilt. You ever feel guilty about anything? Yes. Got this feeling in there. Huh? Isn't that terrible? And <clears throat> then, if we give this side the nod over here, we felt guilty. If we give this one the nod, then we weren't getting to do what I wanted to do, so we felt self-pity. And that is even more painful. And that's got the whole thing pretty screwed up. Now this goes along as uh, somewhere, of course you can put all kinds of synonyms on this, you wouldn't say you have self-pity. Other people have it, but you would get depressed. Same word, same situation, but a different word. One is a diagnostic term, and the other one is just plain people shouldn't do that. You shouldn't feel sorry for yourself. I can't, because I'm entitled to it the way I've been treated, but nobody else should have it. But now if you go to the physician and tell you how you feel, he'll tell you you're depressed and give you some Elevil or something like that. You know, that'll pack you up a little bit. Or you can go out here on the street and get you several things that will <coughs> ease the situation for a little bit. Then you have to get in trouble to keep that up all the time. Then we were told that you, when he was trying to raise us up the way we go, they took us to various and sundry so-called authorities, they showed us the policeman that would cause us trouble if we didn't be a good, good kid, is that right? And the sheriff and so on, and they showed us these uh, various and sundry other things. They took us to church on Sunday morning maybe and told us how good we had to be here. We wound up being scorched. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much the thing that to be that way from now on. It's bad enough to get burned for a minute, but I think forever. So, <clears throat> believe and do as you're told by your authorities. Now our authorities get more and more as we grow. Believe and do as told by your authorities. Now obviously the authority is going to tell me something that will be to his advantage, not mine. All they're trying to do is not to make us conscious or live well, but to make us be good, as they call it, which don't make no waves, <clears throat> don't rattle no doors, don't rock any boats, just be a good, look, 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 get a job, vote for money, pay your taxes, vote when they tell you to, regardless of what you got to vote for. And uh, then when you get all through, they don't have probate. Okay, make sure you do all those other things first. Now this is, uh, then we get into the idea with ourselves, maybe that I should improve myself. Oh man, did you ever try to do that? 
what would you do? Put another head on or another <laughs> arm or another leg or put in two stomachs or something like that? Huh? I don't know how to improve. I've looked at human beings inside and out. I've taken them apart down to the tiniest pieces. I couldn't see a thing. I could even remotely decide to improve. It's a pretty good work for real. Can you think of any way you can improve a human being? Any of them? I don't know. Would you? Would you like to have another arm or something? Huh? You could think of one? Coming to this class? Well, this is not improving you. It's trying to take you apart. <laughs> uh, it's really throwing off the junk, you know. Um, see, it's like you found a great treasure out in the field somewhere, buried, got your little metal detector, went out there and found something. And all you got to do to get the treasure is take the dirt off. You don't have to change the treasure in any way, do you? Just get the dirt off of it. So we're just talking about some dirt we all been throwing around. Every morning we get up, we put a 150-pound sack over your shoulder and start off with it like we got to carry it. And we don't ever set it down. You don't know how to go to bed. Don't set it down inside the bed and lay it on the chest. <laughs> Just throw concrete blocks and throw bricks. So we can do that. Then we finally decided really how it was. Well, that didn't work very well. We decided if you and she and he and they and it were all different, then I would be fine. <laughs> Try that one out. That would mow you up tight. If he or she or they or it and everything else was all different, then I would be okay. Right? So now we learn how to blame. Now, here goes. These three are tormentors. Uh, these three are tempters. T-E-M-P-T-E-R-S, they say no, do it, come, have a have one, or let's do it. These over here are the great reprovers. They reprove you all the time. Both of them are tormentors. Now we set ourselves up in the middle of constant torment. Anytime we're not totally distracted, we're tormented. <laughs> Is that right, John? Yes. We'll hunt for a lot of distractions. You know, if you furnish distraction, you want to make a lot of money, get in the distraction business. <coughs> Is that correct? Yes. Do uh, baseball players get more money than most businessmen? And the boxers get more? And the uh, hockey players get more? And football players and so forth all out there? Do entertainers on the stage, comedians make more money than hardworking people? Because we like to be distracted, because the only peace we can have is when we are distracted. Is there a radio in your car? <coughs> hey, got a telephone too, John? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I got a telephone, but I'll take it in the car. I go out the door, it gets bumped. I'm going to leave that telephone there. I don't want that thing with me. But <coughs> we spend a lot of our funds for being distracted. Is that correct? We go to shows, we go to entertainment places, which there's nothing wrong with it, but those people are paid more. Think of Michael Jackson. He makes more money than we'll ever hear about in our life. Let's, let's see or get a hold of him. Does he do anything very worthwhile or is he just distracting people? Distracting. Okay. Now, can you reevaluate this whole situation here right now, John? <coughs> that you don't need to be is the purpose of living. Your whole purpose is to be non-disturbed. Can you see that's kind of a big joke? Huh? It's a big joke I played on. Sure, we played it on ourselves. Doesn't matter. We're not picking on anybody or anything. Anyway, we did it as a kid with what white light we had as a child. It seemed the thing to do. But I've got more light today. I don't have to do that. Do you? Can you... Totally reevaluate that and kick it out right now. I don't see why you could. Now that's a philosophical answer. <laughs> <laughs> we can philosophy here until hell freezes over. But let's, let's talk about it. Can you do it? Yes. Right now? Yes. Okay, then that's 
what you came here for. The thing on it said it was a talk on personal integration or being transformation. You're a transformed individual when your purpose of living is no longer just to be non-disturbed. Okay? Then you go out and live freely and with everything there. So you can do this all at once or you can take 20 years. I know people have taken several lifetimes and they're still fighting with it. Okay? But you can do it right now. Now, of course, that <clears throat> once somebody says, well, I could do that, or uh, it won't work. See, we can sit here and talk for umpteen years. I think we can keep the same subject going on uh, transformation for weeks and months and years. I've been talking on it for 40 some odd years, and I haven't run out yet, so I can keep on. That's all right. Okay? But unless you apply it, it's just so much stuff. Uh, might even serve as a distraction sometimes, <clears throat> just for a little while. So uh, I usually try to see if we have a little good time while we do all these things. Might well be a little distraction, but you can do that, can you not, John? Right here, right now. Your purpose of living is living. Living includes experiencing freely everything that comes your way today. It includes deciding what you want to do. Take off and go do it. You know, it may work, not work. Everything's an experiment. And have you uh, run experiments that didn't work? What you do with it? You flush it. And if you got something that works, you use them. Is that right? Say, so, well, that would work. Now, here we have not thought of this as an experiment, but we've been experimenting with using infantile methods and principles to try to live in a grown-up world, is that right? Now you've had a good, ex a long time to run the experiment. Huh? Yes. It hasn't ever worked yet. No. I guess it's time to flush it. <laughs> okay, now let's try one of saying I'm free to experience whatever may come along today. Okay? Now I'm going to draw an analogy. You know, we generally learn by analogies far more than we do straight things. So I'm going to put up an analogy. Is there any questions, comments, or put down some this one? I don't mind being put down. Go ahead and push it down if you like. John, is there anything haywire on that thing? How about you? Anything that look reasonable that you experienced it, been doing it? That's quite all right. About time we won't change. Carolyn, you've been doing it for yes. um, 10 years? Um, I am too. I tried it for many years. It didn't work. So we'll take it off here. And the chore is to change from trying to be non-disturbed to see that I am a grown person now. I'm free to experience whatever may arise in my way today. Now you can do that. You're going to experience it anyway. Is that right? If something comes up, we're going to experience it. Might as well do it gracefully. Do it with style. Maybe somebody steps on the toe, somebody calls me a dirty name, somebody bangs behind the car and makes a lewd gesture at me, but so why? Don't bother me. As I said, you know, like me, you just had poor taste. I'm not bothered with people with poor taste. Anyway. Now let's draw this same picture up here. <coughs> uh, we're going to call this the organization, you know, we're all called organisms, aren't we? We're living organisms. At the moment. So here we're going to have an army. You know, every country has an army. Right? They all have armies. Now, an army is an organization also. You might say an organism. Is that right? So we'll start off with here's the troops. That's all uh, non com guys, you know, non commissioned officers. They're, uh, they're down here just doing whatever somebody hollers for them to do, just like all the cells in our body. <clears throat> if you say for it to write, it writes. Is that right? If you say it to <clears throat> run a little machine over here, it runs a little machine or swears at it because it's not working right. And so on down the line. If you say uh, comb my hair, it combs your hair. All these little cells take orders. Is that right? <coughs> And in here you have the intelligence corps. That's the guys that goes out and sees what's going on. Okay? Now 
they don't give orders to the troops. They send things somewhere else. So here we are, same sort of thing. We've got all of our senses and so forth and receiving impressions from the environment all the time and from the troops. We hear about what those cells are calling. Is that right? And here we have a wise general. <clears throat> now that's equivalent to us having a life principle that he didn't do anything see. I don't know how to wiggle his finger, but all I got to do is him to wiggle his finger and he does it. Now you can't wiggle that finger. You can bend it, you may break it, but you can't wiggle it like that. That's up to me. I say that uh, the troops need a little nourishment and I can eat. And you can't eat for me, all right? Can't do that. You may cook me a beautiful meal and set it on the table, but who's got to eat it? Me, is that right? So, <clears throat> the intelligence corps just sees what's going on out here from the environment. It's got all kinds of input from troops. Now, they report to the wise general. We have something in us that's equivalent to that, probably far more intelligent than this wise general is, okay? <clears throat> the wise general then gives orders to the troops, okay? And the troops carry it out and the army progresses along. Now we lose jillions of little soldiers in here every day and pay no more attention to it than the general does losing a few troops up there. You know, you've got a lot of little cells that die today. Lots more gets recruited. It gets in the act almost immediately, okay? And we don't give a daily thought. It's no big deal that a few of the troops got dissipated today. Is that right? You lose a lot of sales every day. I lose a lot. You do. Everybody else does. <coughs> so now, let's say that this intelligence corps in here uh, decided that they didn't need to go out and look for really what's going on, but they decided to set up a philosophy that the whole thing was never to have to move this whole army. It would just be everything provided for it without any effort on their part, okay? They, they got to be philosophers instead of uh, spies, okay? <laughs> so they begin to tell the wise general something that wasn't true. Now the general has only this source to get it, okay? So what's the general going to do? He's going to give orders based on that false information. That goes down here. What do you think is going to happen to the troops now? So if they see a big army coming over the hill over there, the so-called enemy, and they report that uh, there's a stump ranch over there. You know, it's just where a bunch of lumbermen cut the ranch. There's trees down the left stump. So there's a stump ranch over there. I don't bother with it. So what's the general going to do? Going to have another vodka tonic and enjoy himself. Is that right? Going out there and get things going. What's going to happen? Troops are going to get slaughtered. Okay. So he tells them that the intelligence corps says there is this sub branch is a big invading. The real sub branch is a big invading army. He goes out, puts these all in full tilt to fight. Run up there and get their things and get all the preparation. There's nothing but stumps to fight. So you're going to morale is going down the tube. Is that right? Hmm? Now, that's the way these poor bunch of troops are all over here when we tell them that we're in a jillion's emergency. Have you reported emergency? You're the intelligence court. Have you reported that you were in an emergency situation umpteen times? A woman called me the other night. She was screaming, carrying on. Her boyfriend hadn't called her. He told her he would call, and here it was, 8 o'clock. And he hadn't called, and she had one of these phones with a call waiting service on it. I wouldn't have one of those either. Um, you got a business agent, you got a business agent, you know I'm talking, I am in case I don't talk to you at the same time. I don't talk to you at the same time. So uh, she said, wait a minute. And when she came back, she said, it was him. And I said, now you just wasted all this beautiful dramatic display you've been carrying on. Oh man, she was upset. She was climbing the wall, hanging off the 
ceiling. She was having fits. It's unbelievable. She has it by her name. <coughs> of course, she's limping when she walks, and she's doing a bunch of other things, and she's getting very upset, and she's going to be having big diagnoses for long. You know, she's going to some guy, and he's going to lay on her. She's got cancer, or she's got some other weird disorder. Doesn't matter what. Because she stays in this state most of the time. Uh, if it's not with one thing, it's another. So you might call that making everything important. But the point is, when you make anything important, you're in a tangle. Is that right? No, it's not important. It may be extremely interesting. It may even be disagreeable. It may be nice. It may be lovely. But I think it might go away. Uh, I don't know what all could be going on. But when you make anything important, you immediately get very anxious. Have you ever tried that? It's not important. The world was going on thousands of years, billions of years before you and I got here. And I got some other news for you. It'll keep on going very long, long. You think so, Tom? Yes, sir. Was it going along pretty good long before you got here? As far as I can. wonder how they even managed without you being around to see what was wrong. Huh? So now. <coughs> The wise general will always, let's think this is worthy of writing down. The wise general, or X in the case we talk about, okay, the essence of the human being, that which you really are, always, not just now and then, but always, does the appropriate thing and only it knows what it is. Appropriate thing for the information for the information reported. Good. What is the general spirit? It always does the appropriate thing for the information it received, what it got from. The intelligence court, okay? Now, if you tell it how terrible something is, it's going to act as though it's terrible. It's going to do the appropriate thing for a terrible situation. It'll fire you all up to fight or run, and you don't have any fighting or running to do. Uh, you're all dressed up, nowhere to go, and what have you, you know. So then you, everybody has charged up a tremendous amount of energy, which we're going to get to around a while. It's accumulated and sent a bunch of energy in for heavy activity and nothing happens. Did you ever know what happens to that then? That energy starts being dissipated through the physical body by doing something never did do before. We call that adaptation. Uh, other people, it's uncomfortable, and other people call that diseases. It is dis-ease, not at ease. But is not disease. You know, there's no disease is sitting up there in the ceiling waiting to see which one of us is going to attack. It is not that. That's the way it's laid out, isn't it? You're a victim of so and so. Peter Oh, Peter looks pretty good. I'm going to bite him. That's <laughs> John, I'll bite him. That's Bob, I'll bite on him. We sometimes feel like because we didn't remember what we did a few hours ago, you know. We don't take any responsibility for what we reported or what we s sent in, but we're in the intelligence core, this little thing it calls itself I, and it has a responsibility to report accurately. Now, not based on some childhood conclusions or any of those sort of things, but on actual what's going on here now at this moment. So, think you can uh, do that, John? Today, you're transformed then. Anybody <laughs> else can do it? Can you do that, Kevin? That's transformation. You no longer are an <coughs> infant living in a grown body with a technical <coughs> education. You are now a grown person. And you are a transformed individual. Know that you have the responsibility of looking at a situation and reporting it accurately. 
because then spirit X, whatever you want to call it, life principle does the appropriate thing for the information it received, but it'll do the appropriate thing if you hand it in. As though you were an infant and you didn't like this right now, so you're going to kick and scream. Okay? Or very politely hold it inside so nobody will see it. Okay? All right, let's have questions, comments, whatever. I'm going to quit talking for a little bit. Now you're going to talk to me for a little bit. Anybody here got a comment? You want to tell me how hard this is? That's what I used to hear. But it's so hard, Dr. Bob, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm addicted to the not eyes. We call these things not eyes. They go around acting like they're you, you know, and they tell you all kinds of dirty things, especially pick it up you. Okay? Let's have the comments now. Sometimes it's hard to get out of those states. Huh? Sometimes it's hard to get out of the states that yeah. you're in. Let's say you're, if you're not aware of it. Well, if you're not aware of it, it's hard to do anything. You know. <laughs> I wouldn't want to drive down the street with you driving the car if you weren't aware. <laughs> I don't like broken bones. If I have one, I will experience it freely, but I'm not going to go out do unusual things like riding with somebody totally unaware. I don't even ride with a drunk and they're a little bit aware, but not much. Okay? Would you go out and you literally ride with a real drunk down the huh? No. You don't like broken bones either, do you? People used to come in and say, how can you stay awake? And you know when I say stay awake know what you're doing. <coughs> and uh, at the time, I was running a big restaurant down in Texas, and we had a meat saw in the back room. One of these big fan saws would go boom, boom, we shove a cow through there and make little pieces out, big pieces. So I'd take them back there and say, well, here's a bone. We took out a loin of beef. Cut this up into one-inch slices on this saw, and but go to sleep while you're doing it. And you know, they all stay awake while they're shoving that thing. Because you can shove it through there and it's as safe as it can be. But if you go to sleep, you cut your head off. Or an arm or a finger or something like that, you know. You're subject to being manual by machinery, aren't you? Pay attention when you're around slavery, you don't go to sleep then, okay? Okay, questions, comments? Or shall we all take a break? Bob, would you talk about having the central eye wake up and take in charge. That's just what I've been talking about. But it can't take charge unless it gets the information. Now look, X don't exist by itself. It made this awareness function and this motor function down here for a very definite purpose. It all works together. If you take, <clears throat> could you say, could you have an army with a wise general on it? Yes. You could. Who, where would his troops be? You don't have any troops. I said, could you have an army with the wise general only? He's just oh. as wise and powerful as he can be, huh? <laughs> Knows every trick of military science. But he don't have an intelligence corps and he don't have troops. So to say, to have X take over and run everything, while I just sit here and enjoy it, is obviously not feasible because the organism has been torn apart. That's what happens after you're dead, and I don't know about that. I haven't followed you around there very much. If you followed anybody through the netherworld for a while, well, finally you get back, but I don't know how. So obviously, okay, you have to have all four aspects or you don't have a human being. You gotta have We'll call it spirit, for lack of a better word. Yeah, let's call it essence. I like that word better. That's what can move this finger. Then we have uh, the mental function. Is that right? It's what says, I want the finger to move. And then we have the physical body, which is <coughs> a piece of dead meat, but these two are not here. Is that right? We say, here lies the remains. We treat it with great respect, but it's just a piece of meat. <laughs> huh? Because it's not a piece of meat.
machinery. It's like a car without a driver or a fuel in it. And we always have function. Now, that is an organism, is that right? Now, if there's no function, you're not there either, right? Your heart's not beating, your eyes are not seeing, your circulation's not going on, breath is being pumped in you, the oxygen exchange, that's that a jillion things going on. Now, you can't say, well, what would happen if we just had this? In other words, we have a responsibility I'm the intelligence core. I live in the vehicle here and experience what it does. Okay? But here's the essence. The essence is essential, but the essence without a mental aptitude to go see what's going on here, the, if we call it here, the intelligence core, huh? the white general is going to sit. See my girlfriend or something. I don't know. He's not going to be out there running the army, is he? <coughs> is that correct, John? That's right. Okay, so now I'm here. If I want to say that I is the intelligence core or the mental function, that's fine to realize here this is I with a line drawn under it. This is I with quotation marks around it. And this is something I have to use. And this is the use that I see going on. Now, they all four have to be there, John. I can't say, well, X, you take over, and I'm not going to tell you anything. Let's see what you do. You know what he'll tell me? I'm going to do that. Okay? Because there isn't got anything to do. It's receiving no information. Even if I'm asleep, I got some little feedback going on in there, right? Phone rings in the middle of the night. Hello. That quick. So where do the knot eyes fit in this diagram? Where did the knot eyes? That was the first I mean, that, one we well, had sure, in there. But if the intelligence we're talking cord, about the intelligence cord being the awareness and the knot eyes filled. filled okay, you've got okay. the same old boys in here. you got the ones that said, we don't have to go out here and see what's going on. We can philosophize about it. Okay, so we get rid of the knot eyes by going through this transformation. What's your ar what army have you got left? You've got an intelligence core that knows what it's doing. It's taking on its rightful occupation, reporting what is without judging it. Okay? So the knot eyes are really judges, is that correct? One says what you should do is complain. What you should do is stick up for your rights. What you should do is find out who's to blame. A, a plane crashes in the country, in the U.S., I'm sure they do it here, too. Uh, what's the first thing they do? Find out who to blame. They call in a big crew from Washington who go out there and comb <coughs> through the wreckage to determine why it happened. That's really going to help everybody on that plane. The next one be different anyway, right? They're going to see what to blame. What was the cause? When we say cause, we're saying what was to blame for it. Is that right? So basically, that's the way it works. So yes, your not eyes disappear when you change their structure. Their structure was based on the whole purpose of living is to be non-disturbed. If I kick that out, what's the not I got to do? He isn't, he ain't daddy isn't there anymore. He can't function without dad's feeding. Yeah, but the awareness fun the awareness function, just as awareness is just aware. The it's rest a, of it the rest of it is is the body. It's the experiencing going the through body the is awareness. Just a, a, a function, just like that thing you're playing with there. If you push the button and turn the current off, and you tell me what that thing's doing then. Well, it won't be doing nothing except being That's there. right. Right. And but the aware if, if you didn't program it to do something, it wouldn't do nothing either. So here, you, the not eyes are the expression of that basic idea that the whole purpose of living is to be non-disturbed, or to regain the non-disturbed state. The knot eyes all die when you move down. Just like the dog dies, uh, the ticks all die when the dog dies. 
and so on down the line. They're parasites. They're just ways of expressing that the whole purpose of living is to be non-disturbed. So the non eyes go. They are not entities. They act like entities while Papa's alive. But if you throw Papa out, the kids go with him. Okay. So if you throw out your favorite tenant, <coughs> he takes all of his family with him. Okay. You ready to deal with that? Right now. I think what we're looking for is, is complicated solutions to simple problems. That is absolutely correct. You want to complicate and philosophize instead of say, hey, this is a simple thing. Um, <clears throat> it is simple. I didn't say it was easy, but I can sure do it. I don't have to go around with my whole purpose of living being to be non-disturbed. Sure, I have things that's not comfortable every day in the world. Who don't? You know, some things have them every day is not comfortable. Even the best of days you have a few. Don't you? You have a few things uncomfortable. So what? I just report it's uncomfortable and uh, going about my business. I'm going to experience it gracefully, freely. I'm not going to jump up and down because now it's my turn to feel a little something. <coughs> you know. Bob, yeah. uh, getting back to my point. The awareness is aware. I can be aware that Leanne is sitting there and Brian is sitting there and you're at the front of the room. That doesn't do anything. That's just an awareness. That's right. Somewhere in there, there is a function which um, has to place some kind of value on, on whatever That's is absolutely happening. absolutely correct. Now, so that, that is being placed by something. It's, I don't know. Well, it, the way, I, the way my experience here. is, is that the awareness is only aware of it, but the place well, of value is not just the awareness. It is one of them. Uh, valuing is based upon experience of the awareness. <clears throat> now, if the awareness never had any experience, it would have no value in the system. But you always have a value. And the awareness job is to place values, comparative value on different things. So we go in a restaurant and they hand us a menu, okay? And uh, it's got a bunch of items listed on it. And uh, maybe at that moment, I would uh, decide on the uh, item here for Because I've never had it before. I'll try it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll put a value on it. I'll see what it is. I may never order it again. That may be the last time, but I gather experience. Right. Now, <clears throat> we function by experience. We're going to get there after a while about people going around asking all kinds of why questions. But let's say that you've got a brain that's, everybody ever notices, it's got a big lob over here and a lob over here and it's got a little thing that runs between them. They call those associated fibers. So you uh, run into something and you stuck your finger in a, on a hot stove one time or another or a hot utensil on the stove. Uh, you know, it's remarkable how well you will value kind of touching the thing the next time before you grab it. Because that sets up an association between memory and not. So, I made one view on the street five years from now, let's say. And you say, hello, Bob, how are you? And I would say, I'm fine, and how's all you? Well, and it's getting along lovely, and I'm just going to keep on talking. I know. I've met her before, what is that? what was her name? <laughs> now that information is recorded over here. <clears throat> and so the little guy on that side that just now come in and says, oh, and I go down the street and say, what was her name? And he goes knocking on every little cell door in there. There's a few billion of them, you know. So it knocks on the door and says, who is that girl? Search me, knocks me, search me, search me. Finally it hits the one, oh yes, you saw her in Vancouver. And it feels like a great relief when I got the information. It's worthless because I was gone two weeks before it got there. <laughs> worthless bit of information was a great relief. <laughs> Did you ever have that happen? Yeah. Huh? Maybe two weeks later and you're brushing your teeth, they bump to, oh yeah. That's who that was. A great relief, isn't it? Because all this activity has been going on. This little guy's been running. The, the, the file clerk has been running, knocking on every little cell door. Hey, who is it, girl? Who is it, girl? Who is it?
<laughs> search me, search me, I don't know, no, no, it's not recording here. Now you ask the question, there's nothing recorded in there. <laughs> you really a creek. It'll rattle from now on, that's called an infinite loop. <laughs> 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 you know that, you burn them up. Put an infinite loop in it, you'll ruin the computer. They call it putting a virus in it these days. A guy on his software puts one in there that can't be answered because there's no data in there. And it'll run until it destroys everything. It'll just keep going, 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 going. So, yes, you develop the awareness function, the intelligence core. <coughs> develops the value system. If this intelligence core is any good, they're going to report there's an army coming. <coughs> uh, they can do that real fast. If they see a sub ranch over there, they say, well, we'll put that in the daily report later today. <laughs> it don't mean anything one way or the other. If there's a flood, they will report it, get with it, the flood, and obviously find the troops and so on down the line. Yes, you, uh, awareness, the intelligence core is a valuing system as well as just looking at it, okay? In other words, I meet some people, I stop and say hello and howdy doody and shake hands with them and others, I just keep moving on, I let them to me. They don't, I don't have any value connected with them. Some of these people I have pretty good values hooked on. In fact, I may have a lot of value hooked on them. Okay. So the value so you're saying, system you're saying intelligence and awareness are the same thing. I mean, I know a lot of people that have no, worked with this, some of this work, and they have observed things that they they keep repeating and they keep repeating, but they don't do anything about it. That's what I so just said. What I, so my they don't ever change the basic decision, so they just keep on with the same pattern. They get drunk every Saturday night, and after a while they get drunk on Saturday and Sunday night, and then pretty soon they're drunk seven nights a week. No sweat. But that's the awareness. That's just they're aware that no, they're doing it's it. No, not. That is that basic decision that we said screwed up the intelligence core. Okay? And if we don't get it out of there, we got a bug in there. And when it's bugged, you don't do anything. So you have an intelligence core. We'll draw a clean one here. Now here is experience, life, function. Here is the intelligence core. And here's the troops down here, or the physical body. And here's the function. You've got four things going. They have to be working together. If this one is all screwed up by having no value or a false value that it's putting out, after all, that was a false value. A misconception is a false value. So certainly, they're receiving impressions from here, and they also have stored up experience in their files so they can push a button and runs out file number F3. Hmm? Your computer got files numbers on it then. Sure. You can call anything back up. Random access memory. It'll go get it. Boom, 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 right now. <coughs> so you have it up there. But there is a value included on these. But now if the overpowering value, the only value you had was to be non-disturbed, then those others all get secondary. So the guy who uh, gets drunk on Saturday likes to, he's bored on Saturday, he don't go to work that day and what have you, so he sits around and gets drunk. Well, next week he still wants to be non-disturbed, so he does that, and after a while that hangs over a little further and a little further, and that produces disturbance in itself, so we try some more. And pretty soon he can be a full-fledged alcoholic. He has still trying to be non-disturbed. Once that decision is gone, then you can have a whole different set of values altogether, okay? Because that's your overpowering valuing system. The whole purpose of living is to regain the non-disturbed state. That's your value. So you can spend time, effort, money, hours, sickness, everything else. Now, uh, I know people who repeatedly get sick. Don't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they keep on doing the same thing, made them sick. Uh, I used to practice as a physician 15 years ago, and I had a lot of people that came to me and they wanted to get all right. Well, we did 
some things or other which relieve the symptom for the time. And you know the only reason they wanted the symptom relieved so they could do what brought it on in the first place. And they went and did it again and again and again. Same people had chairs leased in my reception room for years. <laughs> I knew who to look out for on Tuesday morning or go into there. So I couldn't get rid of them, so I'd move. They had to find somebody else. And I'd start to cycle all over again. I got another bunch of people sitting there leasing chairs in the reception room. Same difference. And they'd always get about the same thing. And I would tell them that if you change your lifestyle, you're liable to get all right. Unbelievable. <laughs> you give me a well, regardless of what I do. Well, okay, I'll fix you up so you feel better. She'll just be numb. That's <laughs> all that really amounts to. We'll help me out. You feel all right? Oh, I'm good again. Okay. So one day I said, can't move anymore. I'm going to quit. And I quit. I've been back since you. I'm not going to. So did you say that intelligence and awareness were or were not the same thing? Intelligence is X. Awareness it takes, from, it takes intelligence to decide what is and is not valuable. That's not just awareness. Awareness could be I'm aware that there's a well, car going by. you were thinking a very different, you are using a very narrow description of intelligence or awareness and I don't. I use a much broader one. I just told you mine. You can tell me yours and I won't buy it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, it's all hooked together. Yeah. It works as a unit, I told right. you. Is right. that right? Right. So it's going to be there. Now you're going to gain certain experience. Uh, you uh, told me about an experience you drowned. We was looking through that thing last night and all the images looked pleasant. Mm -hmm. You said you, you took the tape home and it looked beautiful run on the machine. Is right. that right? Now right. you've gained some awareness of how it works. Right. So you got a value that you don't spend half the night trying to make the image look good when it's supposed to look like it does, and you take it home and it runs off a nice picture. Okay? Right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> these things are not four separate things. There are four aspects and they all work together. Okay. Uh, if you have no body, you wouldn't have any values either. Okay. But you have one, so uh, don't rattle around about that. One time, Justin, that was before he got Justin. He was so good it hurt. <laughs> Came down to visit me and I said, he already is living on planet Earth, let's be a little earthy. <laughs> He's been doing better ever since. <laughs> don't make me hurt when I'm around him. <laughs> have more fun too than us. Okay, let's take a break for a little bit. It's about uh, 20 minutes after 11. This one run long, so we will take about a 10 minute break and then we'll do what before noon and then we'll let everybody go eat appropriately so we don't starve, famish from lack of nourishment and so forth. Okay? okay. A few people said they wanted to continue to